welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and this is my YouTube channel, Life in Motion. Uh, now, you'll see by the title of the video that I have sold one of my cars. Um, I have a 718 Cayman, a Porsche 718 Cayman, and I've also got a 1997 Rover Mini Cooper. Um, the 718 Cayman is my daily drive that I use every day for work and for social reasons. Uh, and then my 1997 Rover Mini Cooper was bought in May of this year as a bit of a lockdown project, something to do while I've been stuck at home working. Uh, thankfully, and you know, touch wood, I continue to work and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but sitting at home working all day can get a little bit boring and a little bit isolating. Uh, so what I did is I bought a Mini to do during lockdown uh, and hopefully then keep for, you know, an extra six months over Christmas and hopefully see next year in the summer and enjoy. But you'll notice that I am not driving a Mini, I am driving my Cayman. And so today we're driving down to Goodwood. It's about an hour and a half for me. Uh, so we're driving down there, so I'm on the way now to meet them and go for lunch. A couple of my friends at work, uh, one of them is a member, and wanted to go out for lunch, wanted to do something special. We're all into cars, so I'll like, have lunch and I'll explain to you after lunch why I sold my classic Mini. This weight on my shoulder is slowing me down. I don't know how it came about. And why the world is spinning faster, everyone. Guys, I've just got to the kennels at Goodwood. I'm just parked up and look at this 911 that came with me today. guys I am just leaving the kennels at Goodwood uh, the kennels is a I believe a restaurant uh, and probably some other bits it's like a golf bit and all that kind of stuff uh, and it's for members I believe members only uh, which a colleague of mine at work is a member and he invited us down for lunch today so we went for lunch can you see that I don't know if you can see there's a um, what's that called Phoenix yellow m3 saloon which is nice there's some good stuff in the car park actually but I said on the way that I would tell you why I sold the Mini. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now, as soon as I have left Goodwood. Right, so I've just pulled out of Goodwood. So why did I sell the Mini? Um, so as I said to you, I bought it in lockdown to do something with it, just to have fun, and I was gonna keep it for maybe six months, maybe even a year to next year and enjoy it in the summer. Um, but actually, what you don't know is that earlier on in the year, the start of the year, I said to myself that I wanted to achieve a few things personally. And one of those things was to buy a house, um, and obviously having a classic is great, but it does mean my money is tied up in a car. And now I'm hopefully going to buy a house soon, which means I need to get the money out of the car. Um, so I can't have, you know, 10 whatever grand sat in a car that I can't use, so I need to get that out of the car. So I ultimately sold the car to help towards uh, the house. Horses everywhere, lovely. I do help some people sell you know, their cars and help people find cars to buy, just a bit of a hobby of mine. I used to sell cars a long, long time ago and just to help kind of me and my personal enjoyment in cars, I help people sell and buy them. So that's what I do. Uh, and a friend of mine asked me, well, how do you sell them? How do you find the best place to go? How do you get them out there? And really online is a fantastic tool um, to get your cars out there, get people seeing them, talking about them getting traffic through to see the car and ultimately selling the car. There are various ways of doing it. Obviously there's auction sites and there's just kind of basically advertising forums in effect to put your car there. Uh, you may have to pay, you may not have to pay. And in return, you're basically advertising your car in their, in their space uh, for people to see. Now I put my car, my Rover Mini Cooper, on Auto Trader, but I also put it on Cars and Classics. Um, Auto Trader was about £90, uh, gave me up, think about up to 20 photos, I could describe the car, um, I could put a video in there if I wanted to, and just do whatever I wanted to. Uh, whereas the Cars and Classics one, I think it was Cars and Classics, I'm sure it was, I didn't pay anything, it was free, you get eight photos to put up there, and you put a little blurb description what it is, and then basically just put a contact number and an email. If someone reaches out to you, then you, you, know, you take it. It's a very, very 
cost-effective way, ultimately a free way of advertising your car online. Now, on Auto Trader, because you pay for it, and I paid about £90, you get more analytics, so it tells you how many people are viewing it. If someone saved it, you can tell you how many people have saved it. Um, but on the Cars and Classics one, it's free. You don't really get anything apart from an email to say it's live and an email saying it's expiring soon. So, you know, which is absolutely fine because it's free. I mean, what are you expecting? It's just basically putting your car on the page. Now, I sold a few cars. I sold a Fiesta for a friend this year. I helped him with it, just some photos. And he put it on Auto Trader, and it was a 2018 or 2019 car, and it sold pretty much straight away. Now, I'd expect it to do that because it's a new car. It's on Auto Trader, and if you're looking for a new Fiesta, that's where you look. But when it comes to selling a classic car, you want to make sure it's on the right forum, it's reaching the right people, so then ultimately you're maximizing your chance of selling the car. And so on the Cars and Classics site, people were looking at Rover Mini Coopers, and that's a popular site for them. So I wanted to put it up on there, and indeed, the person that bought the car did find my car from the Cars and Classics site. One of the most, if not the most important thing when looking to sell your car online is getting the right photos. Now, I don't mean that you've got to be super artistic, you've got a super good camera, but I mean you need to make sure that you clearly get really good quality photos, put the effort in and clean the car, make sure it looks nice for a starter, make sure you've got a nice backdrop, even if you're in a car park, make sure that it's nice and tidy, go up to the top floor or go to a park or go somewhere where it's nice and quiet and you can move the car around. The important bit is that you can make sure you get the full 360 degree of the car, make sure you get the interior from both sides, get the seats, make sure you get the wheels, make sure you get the bonnet. And actually, the best thing you can do is take so many more photos than you don't think you need, just in case one of them isn't in focus or doesn't quite work or the light isn't great. So really make sure you take time to take good quality photos. If you can take a video of the car, then that's fantastic because people can really get a sense of it. And I've got to tell you, and you're probably the same as me, when I'm buying a car, what I do is just keep flicking through, looking at the car. Even when I bought it, if it's a used car or a new car, I'm always just looking through and looking at the cars because for me, there's something so exciting about buying a new car that all I want to do is keep looking at the car. So make sure you get good quality photos. Make sure you put as many as you can up online. And if you could do a video, that's fantastic because that really, really helps. So I was thinking, you know, what could potentially be a new classic to buy? Um, I've always been an American Muscle fan. Um, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's movies. Maybe it's TV shows I watch, like Fast and Loud on Discovery Channel. Maybe there's lots of things that I watch. But to be honest, when I look, was thinking about it, I'd really like a kind of mid kind of 1966 to 68 Mustang. Obviously, I'd like a fastback, like most people would, which is kind of like the the uh, the hatchback kind of boot which you'd see on like a normal a new Mustang today I'd like that shape and um, but unfortunately they're very very expensive you can find a coupe which is kind of like a, a saloony type boot to it um, much more easily so maybe that's the one I would buy sorry about that after a near after a, uh, a near accident sorry I was interrupting them um, so yeah I would probably go for a Mustang um, but obviously I think I'll do that next year so I'll obviously buy the house and get kind of things back to normal and then I'll I'll go searching for my next classic car um, but it's been a fantastic experience I've really really enjoyed it so if you're thinking about buying a classic uh, a mini is a great place to start uh, parts can be cheap but to restore a Mini can be expensive, but to be honest, it can be expensive with any car. If the car's prone to rust, which the Rover Minis are, don't you know? Don't expect to do it to find a return. Do it because you love it, that you love the car, that you'll keep it for a long, long time. Um, because rust can be a very expensive and silent killer. If you don't know, because the car's covered in filler and a nice paint, you won't know that underneath is a very weak or you know potentially a, a lot of rust. So. Be careful if you're buying a classic car, but a Mini is fantastic, and you'd really enjoy it, I reckon. So, uh, yeah, comment below if you've got a Mini, if you've bought one for restoration. Uh, if you're thinking of buying one and you want to ask some questions, feel free to pop some questions below. I'm more than happy to answer anything I can. Guys, so that has been the video. Thank you very much for watching. As I mentioned, the 718 is my daily driver. It's not gone anywhere, and it won't be going anywhere for a little, little while longer. Uh, the Mini's gone, but it's been paved way and given me some cash in the bank uh, to help with some personal goals of mine, which I'm you know, very thankful for and I'm looking forward to doing. So, you know, it's all, all for the greater good, and I will be buying a classic car in future. So don't worry, there'll be some more stuff on the channel. Um, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment below what you think I would buy uh, if I'm going for an X Classic car. Uh, but for now, I will see you very, very soon. I've got the time.